So there are a lot of books um, that I think uh, folks should um, should read. Um, I would be remiss to not actually recommend a couple of my sisters um, because they've been really helpful to me. Um, one is called The Rebellious Life of Mrs. Rosa Parks. And it's kind of a political biography of Rosa Parks. Um, but I think it gives for movement activists a story of, again, the reason it's called The Rebellious Life is that, that Mrs. Rosa Parks has this quote where she, she says that she's had a long life of being rebellious, right? Like that starts way, way, way before the Montgomery bus boycott and, and really leads to, you know, her playing a role in the Poor People's Campaign, the anti-apartheid movement, the, um, you know, all kinds of, I mean, you know, when you look through history. And so, so I think that's really helpful. And, and then her, her more recent book, A More Beautiful and Terrible History, which is kind of some of the stories that we kind of need for, for activists, um, especially, you know, in this moment of the movement for Black Lives, in this moment of kind of racial and economic justice um, protests. Um, I really love also um, the autobiography of Miles Horton. He was the founder of the Highlander Folk School um, in um, Highlander, Tennessee, which was really a training ground for the industrial union movement and the civil rights movement. Um, and it's called the Long Hall. Um, he was actually a Union Theological Seminary student who then left Union before he graduated um, and, uh, and set up the Highlander School. Um, uh, and you know, I've always held, had um, that political education is really important to activists. And so another book that I kind of was turned on to because of knowing Miles Horton a little bit and, and, and spending some time in Highlander is um, uh, the autobiography of Septima Clark called Ready From Within. Um, both of those books are not particularly um, new, um, but I actually go back and read them both um, all the time because I think there's something about um, knowing who has come before and what compelled them, but also knowing the importance of kind of moving people's minds, not just people's bodies um, uh, is really important. Um, there's there's a, a, a lot of, of history that I think is really helpful. Um, I think um, if people haven't read um, Frederick Douglass's speech after the Dred Scott decision, um, I think you probably can't be a real activist. Um, I just think you have to be able to see um, how someone can articulate and analyze a situation when all feels like it's lost. Um, uh, I think so often we we look at um, at like victories, um, and we and when there's a lot more learning, I think in in what seems like it's going to be loss, um, but then often our our are the moments when actually um, uh, so much possibility, it, you know, is there. And then, as a as a biblical scholar, um, I think there's a, a long history of kind of understanding and 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 reading the the Christian movement as a political, powerful social movement of the poor. And so, you know, if people are interested in that, I I recommend a, a book by Richard Horsley. It's called The Message in the Kingdom. Um, basically how Jesus and Paul ignited a revolution. Um, and uh, and there's, a, there's a bunch of, of books um, by biblical uh, archeologists and scholars um, that, that look at um, the kind of poor people's ca campaign that Jesus started. Um, uh, so there's so many more. Uh, what I'm currently reading is mostly articles these days. Um, and so, uh, um, but I, I also, most of the books that I kind of currently am reading are, are more biblically based just because I write a lot of sermons and speeches um, on Bible texts. And so. 